I, enough of that nonsense, Jules. How about some quick hits? Let's now, go. I'm going I'm to reveal something very quickly. I wrote these this morning, about an hour and a half ago. I might have forgotten something, one or two aspects. So if so, please feel free to correct and add and amend as the case may be. But Jose Mourinho makes the headlines again, uh, Jules. Now, he, he went to a park in North London. He was training with Tanguine Dombele, maybe some other people too. It's not really clear. Um, and it seemed, looked as if they weren't following social distancing protocol. Yeah. Uh, is the media being a little bit hard on him? No. Why? No. Why? Well, he even they, said, like, he acknowledges he might not have followed the protocols, but there was no... He apologized because he knew that was wrong. Why, why would you do something that you know is wrong? The club, and I spoke to someone at the club yesterday who said it's been a rough, rough two weeks. And I think, you know, between the furloughs game, between <laughs> Mourinho, uh, not just Mourinho and Dombele, by the way, Cecinio and David Sanchez were also running together, having a job together. So was Serge Oye and, and one of his friends, which is a bit different because Oye and his mate actually safe as a together. Was that wait, 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 sorry, sorry. So if Aurier and his friend, um, li they, they've lived together for a long time, right? Yeah, they it's like you and your wife. You can bag. go running together. What's wrong with them going running together? If they, if they self-isolate together. So they're fine. Yeah. It's not include Aurier in this. No, but that's why I'm defending him because he got bad press when people yes. didn't know the story. So I'm, I'm ha I happily wrote the story yesterday right. on ESPN.com for everybody to check, explaining that Aurier, by the way, was going to do his food shopping with his mate, running, and they've been living together, self-isolating together. So that's no problem. There's nothing wrong with Cicinho that, and Davison Sanchez, however, right. is more of a problem because although they live in the same block of flats with no garden, hence why... They went running outside as well. They should have been social distancing and so should have Adam Dombele and Mourinho. Mourinho, by the way, wearing the full club tracksuit. I mean, come on. He, you know it's wrong. You know you're out. You can, you, people can see you and then you still wear your full purple you, Spurs being Jose Mourinho. I mean, come on. Can you explain something to me? I have two questions. One is, were the Amazon cameras following him there? Is this part <laughs> of it? No, I'm... I, I'm it's I'm a good question. Like, I, I really believe want they were know. not. I, I would love to know. And yeah, secondly, I believe they were not. What I don't get, I mean, I think it's great. He and Don Belli, apparently, they're neighbors or, or whatever. And like, they live not far from each other and they, they're making friends again, which is I good. Know, That's the only again. But what I don't get is how hard could it be to go and do some running around in the park? What, why do you have to touch Don Belli? Why you got to get up so close to him? I don't know. That's the part I don't get. Like, I don't have a problem. If you want to go and do something in the park, I mean, we're seeing clubs in Germany train together even. Yeah. You know, without, what, 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 I mean, Dombele hard of hearing? Do you have to get close to him <laughs> to be like, hey, Tangi, now we're going to do shuttle run. I mean, what? Maybe, this maybe, is so part, stupid. maybe part of the, uh, the, re the rekindling relationship is like, you know, being close, being very tactile and touchy. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think they were that tactile, but. It's, it, listen, it's a bad press for Spurs, for Mourinho, at a time where they really didn't need it. And I feel a bit for, for people at the club as well who have been repeating to the players and Mourinho as well, don't do anything stupid, don't go out like this. You know, respect all the rules. And even senior players were, were quite infuriated by what, what's been happening. Not just Mourinho and Dombele, but question, also the though. other players. All this stuff comes out at once and it's all Spurs players. It's already incorrectly. Sissignon and Dobinson Sanchez, Mourinho and Dombele. Before that, we had the Kyle Walker story, former Tottenham player. Uh, we had Dele Alli out at night, current Tottenham player. We had Jack yeah. Grealish, once played against Tottenham. Is this, a, is this some <laughs> kind of anti-Spurs? Yeah, is it a conspiracy? It might, you know, it might be. It might be. Just, Daniel Levy. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it's a coincidence. Yeah. Right, Gab, I know you're fascinated by Cristiano Ronaldo's crunch challenge and by the way we we're very happy to hear uh, how many uh, abs you abs you do yourself but he got 142 in 45 seconds so he tells you in 40, in 45 seconds how many you can do touching your yeah. feet you know uh, but he would be pretty cross because he's not even the best one Blaise Matuidi that's Ma right Blaise, you're you know. not, your boy Blaise Matuidi My did boy 144 Blaise. and it was funny because in his message he was almost apologetic to Cristiano. I was like, oh, well, Cristiano, I think I might have beaten you, but, you know, that almost killed me. Maybe next time, let's just go for a run or something. Exactly. How about, and even worse, cool. and I even know, worse, 
beaten by beaten by a girl. Yeah, Casta Semenya. Casta Semenya, who is the South African, if you don't know your athletics, uh, Olympic gold medalist, uh, World Cup winner, 800 meters, uh, and all of that, who's actually done 176. I mean, she not didn't beat him, she thrashed him. Yeah, although I've seen Caster Semenya when, because you know, when, when, when they run, like obviously they've got the little exposed midriff. Those yeah, are some strong. hardcore abs yeah, that yeah, she has. Strong. Like, she, I mean, I'm not, say, I'm not going to say they look better than Cristiano's. I'm not going to do that. No, no, no. But um, I'm also imagining she's probably considerably lighter than Cristiano because she's not as muscular as Cristiano, which makes it easier. But if you go see this, she posted her ab, ta- ab challenge. It's kind of funny. It looks like she, she did it on like a, a children's exercise mat as well. Yeah. Whereas Cristiano, you know, and she's just going boom, boom, boom. I mean, pretty impressive. Well done, Caster well done, Semenya. Exactly. Now, while everybody seems in chaos, the Bundesliga in Germany, uh, they're pushing ahead. And Christian Seifert, the chief executive, said that they, they hope to be playing in early May. They're, they're back in training. Jules, how are they doing it? It's an interesting one, if, obviously, because you have to compare with other leagues. Uh, like you said, all the clubs are back in training by small groups of four on different pitches so they don't come close to each other, even the four that train together, keep the social distancing. They, they don't shower at the training ground. They don't eat at the training ground. They go home straight away, pretty much training back in their car, back to their house. So they're trying to keep every precaution. And for the games, yes, they're hoping to go back on the beginning of May, all behind closed doors. Obviously, they sort of worked out that you'd have 240 people, all in all, at the stadium for the game. The teams, the, the coaching staff, obviously, the, the medical staff, the, the referees and the, the production TVs. Uh, and if you keep it at 240, you could actually make it work. Let's see if, it, if it's as straightforward as this, but they're very hope, hopeful that yeah. they could do this and be the first one of the, of the big leagues, really, to, uh, to go back playing. And I would assume they would all need to be tested beforehand yes. as well. And a lot. But, you know, good on them for working this one out pretty quickly, as long as they don't put any people's health at risk and, you know, they can, they can do this uh, rightly. All right, uh, more turbulent times at Barcelona, Jules. Uh, it looks like elections could be brought forward after uh, Jose Maria Bartomeu, the club man- uh, president, fell out with a guy he had anointed as his successor. <laughs> yeah, Emilio Russo. I mean, Tuesday morning was a, a board meeting, and you, th- you would have thought maybe, although they've been a mess for a few weeks, you know, the players wage cuts and not, and this, and Messi having a go about Bartomeu and all of that. Uh, and... And it was an extraordinary board meeting from, from what was reported, really, where uh, Emily uh, Russo refused, basically, to be the candidate of the Bar- Bartolomeo, uh, a kind of appointed to be a successor, or at least to take part in the elections in 2021. Bartolomeo asked, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but asked all the, um, the directors that were not with him to resign. I mean, he could not fire everyone, but if, he, if he'd been able to do it, I think he would have done it. It was, it was, I mean, the club was already a mess before Tuesday, but now it's even worse because if you start being messy at that level of the club, it's the beginning of the end, right? It's so bad that I almost feel a little sorry for Bartomeu in the sense that... Why? You know, he's, he all no, caused that. He's a big part of the problem, but the fact is he's not going to be here after the new elections. Um, so in some ways he could say, you know what? Screw all of you. Let's just get through it, have the elections, and I'm walking out of here, and, you know, I'll still be the guy who kept Messi at the club and, uh, and, and, you know, and who delivered a couple of league titles, in theory. In practice, by deciding he's going to have his anointed successor and then have this guy turn on him, it just shows you what an absolute, what an absolute mess this is. And it's crazy. I mean, I think the winners in this are going to be Xavi, watching from a distance. Yeah. And I think Lionel Messi, because as a reminder, Lionel Messi's contract expires. And Lionel Messi holds all the cards here. Because if there's no strong leadership above him, no, no faith in what's going on, I think he's in a position where he can probably pretty much anoint uh, his successor, or, or anoint the next Barcelona president. Which, by the way, is a big responsibility for him, and one that is almost kind of unfair to put on him. Right. Meanwhile, Gab, Real Madrid, on the other hand, uh, managed to take voluntary pay cuts and deferrals. How do they do it? Oh, I noticed you're showing your bias here, of course, because you had a go at Barcelona. Now you're praising Real Madrid. <laughs> but, yeah, Zizou. 
I, we've said this before, <laughs> different clubs are in different financial situations. And Real Madrid looked at it and they looked at the players and they said, all right, we don't have the same cash flow nightmares that other clubs have. We don't need to resort to an air tip. But hey, you guys, and it's really the basketball team and, and of course the football team who make a ton of money. If you guys take a voluntary pay deferral, um, we don't know how much it's going to be. It depends how much legal money we yeah, get. 10 whatever. or 20%, right? Yeah, Tebas crying about they're going to lose a billion or whatever. You know, Tebas, you know, relax, calmate, eh? Hombre, wait and let's see. Um, but he's saying, are you guys willing to do this? And on a voluntary basis, they're willing to do it. So this is, the, this is what you can do if you've looked after your finances. If you haven't, then you're in uh, the type of situation other clubs are in. Yeah. Bayern Munich have locked up Thomas Muller for another two seasons, extending his deal through 2023. Uh, it's just obvious, right? It was, yeah. It was an incredible form. Well, basically... Nico Kovac put him, as we say in French, in the cellar and didn't really rely on him anymore. And Nancy Flick put him out of the cellar to put him back on, on the pitch. And he's been in great form, uh, playing different positions even. And, and with his contract running out in 2021, they've extended it to 2023. And if you saw the, the photo, because of social distancing, he was in the middle. And then you had Oliver Kahn and, and I think <laughs> on, like far away from him. It was brilliant. But yeah. It was a no-brainer, really. Even if he's uh, more towards the end than at the beginning, obviously, I think he's 30 or 31 now. Uh, it makes sense also for how important his leadership is in that dressing yeah. room and, and, and his relationship with Flick. One of the fact that... For me, no problem there. Look, I mean, uh, I've pointed this out before. Thomas Muller, and I got so much crap for this. Thomas Muller is... I don't know that there's a, there's a footballer who's been more productive with more limited ability, technical ability, yeah, than, yeah. than Thomas Muller, right? So you're always going to have a situation at some point where you say, oh, yes, I admire his, his, uh, his athleticism and he's big and strong and he's, com he's committed and he's intelligent, intelligent yeah. tactically and he's the round deuter and all this stuff. But ultimately, like, you know, can he play football? Um, and no, the answer is no, he can't play it technically as well. He's not as skillful as other players. So you're always going to have that issue. But I think it's, it's really important for Bayern that now they can say, Thomas, you're going to end your career here in 2023. And if in a year or two time, you know, he's never playing and he's just coming off the bench for a few minutes or whatever, and they're already shuttling him towards a job upstairs yeah. at the club, that's a good situation to be in. 20, yeah. Having him leave in 2021 when he's still young enough, that would have been, I think, really, really, really problematic. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.